Greetings my brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. Today my topic is stewardship or ownership. The big question. My brothers and sisters, we all ask that questions ourselves. Oh, I make all this money. I have all these privileges. I have all this wealth. What do I do with it? It all belongs to me. I worked for it. I got it. My brothers and sisters, we need to understand even our own lives doesn't belong to us. All we belong, what we have is our free will. Today we'll ask that question, whether we will be stewards or whether we will be owners. Now, when we look at stewardship, stewardship begins and ends with the understanding that God owns everything. We do not own anything. All we own is that free will. That's all. And that free will, how we can even offer it to our Creator God, to align with His will, for to His purpose, what He wants us to do in this life, He has given us, He has gifted us, when you look at Revelations chapter 22, verse 13, beautiful verse. This is the verse which talk, which, give, which gives the answer to all our questions of who we are. God tells us, I am the Alpha, the first Greek alphabet, and Omega, the last Greek alphabet, the beginning and the end. When God is the beginning and the end, we are just a speck of dust. So my brothers and sisters, we don't own anything. It is God's gift to us that he made us in the palm of his hand and gave us that life in a single cell. Then we were born as a child to our parents. And then now we have grown up by his blessings, by his protection that we are adults. Then he has given us that mind, that sense of understanding to experience who he is. And whatever he has given us, he has blessed us. It is his gift to us to be shared with others. So we own nothing. God wants us. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Psalm 24 Chapter 1 highlights this fact. The world belongs to the Lord. Everything within the world and everything that is lives in the world belongs to Him. If that is the case, where is the question of our ownership? We should understand that we are stewards of what we have been blessed with and how well we are. We share those gifts among our fellow human beings in our societies, in love, humility and kindness to build up the kingdom of God right here in our position, whatever we are working as, whatever profession we are in, in our families. We don't own our families. We are only stewards. We are only taking care of our families. God wants them. Now, stewardship matters how we live our lives, whether we consider that it belongs to us or it belongs to God. So when you look at that, we know that God is our creator. We can see in Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 to 16. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth. All these were created through him and for him. Colossians 1 15 and 16. Lord Jesus was present when this world was created with God. The Father God, His only beloved Son Jesus, and the love between them, the Holy Spirit, were together as one Spirit hovering over. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we see that. So God, Lord Jesus Christ, was present during the creation. Everything what we see is created for Him and through Him and in Him. Now, when you look at Job chapter 41 verse 11, or the same verse, meaning 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3 to 5, 
Not only did Christ create everything, Christ wants everything. So my brothers and sisters, God wants everything. We do not want anything. What we want is our free will. And that free will, how we can use it to carry our crosses in this earthly journey. How well we can be stewards of the blessings bestowed on us. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9. For we are all God's fellow workers. God himself is making one of us. He is calling ourselves fellow workers. So God is delegating to each one of us to work for him in his kingdom. We are not working for our own selves. We are working for him. Whatever we do, we do it for him and through him and in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 1. We are all working together with him. So Lord Jesus is with us and we work with him. Now in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 11 to 12, aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we instructed you so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. So my brothers and sisters, here God wants us to work, every one of us, in whatever capacities he has given in whatever talents he has given, he has asked us to work. Never be idle. So once we work, then we will not be dependent on someone else. So my brothers and sisters, we, are, we personally steward resources. So we have our time, we have our talent. So therefore, those are our resources. We have to put it to use. So that we are not dependent on anyone, rather we help the other person with whatever fruits we get out of our time and talent. Now Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 to 25. Too much saving will result in temptation to sin. My brothers and sisters, we all save money. We all know that we have to save for our time and we will have some kind of famine or some kind of lean period. But then again, too much saving can cause us to sin because we are not being the steward resources for saving. So we need to understand that. We need to save, but yes, save according to what God has told us to do. If we are enough earnings, God has at least mentioned 23% of our earnings to be given as tithing, not 10%, 23%. And also many much more we can give. So if we have enough money, enough possessions, even after tithing, then we can save that. Then it is fine. But if we are trying to only save without not giving any kind of tithing, this 23%, and then the other offerings, we, if we do not give, no, we are saving for our lean period. That is not right. We are committing sin. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. God desires that you take care of your family. In 1 Timothy, we have to take care of our family. We can't be very stingy with our family, just getting them all poor quality food and poor quality stuff. Rather, we got to be generous with the family because they don't have anybody else we are God to them for our children we are like God our father if our father wants to be stingy with us he wouldn't give us what we have we don't deserve anything he has given us out of his generosity and we too by our own generosity should give it to our children to our family and to all the people who are dependent on us you take care of the church. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 6, we have to contribute to the church. And likewise in Timothy 5, 17, 18, we need to contribute to the church. We find all the time our archdiocese, our bishop asking, pleading, but how much of us can we give? Yes, we are having troubles, we are having 
situations which we are not able to do it but then whatever little we can give it we have to give to the church it is our responsibility and duty to give it to the church and because that's what the word of god tells us then for people in need when people are in need we need to give that because matthew 25 verses 35 to 40 tells that we need to give it to people who are in need of our talents our time our treasures second corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 to 7 whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly my brothers and sisters if we are giving sparingly we will also reap only sparingly but if we are giving abundantly then we will give abundantly so it's very important if we say that you are not having money with you now because you are not given to others when you had money therefore your money has been taken away because you did not give it to them but if you say that you have money today because you gave your money to them and that's why you have money now now it is time for you to give more so that you have it more. 1 John chapter 3 verse 17 but if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need yet closes his heart against him how does God's love abide in him now John in his first letter is asking this question John who experienced the beloved disciple of our Lord who experienced his love at different point in time right from Mount Tabor and then he was at the garden with Jesus and then he was at the foot of the cross with Jesus he is asking if you say that you have love in you if you have God in you and if you do not help the person in need how can God be present in you? Because God is love. God will give everything. So my brothers and sisters, we should ask ourselves, are we taking care of the need of our fellow human beings? If we are not, that means God is not present within us. There is no love within us. If we had that love, we will go and take care of our brother or sister. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, God calls Adam to work. He tells the man and puts him in the Garden of Eden and takes and asks him to work it and keep it. So God wanted, and that's the way humanity should live. So everybody should work, and that is the way of living, dignified way, both to the, in the society and also in the eyes of our God. Now, we also see other perfect stewards we find Joseph being the steward of Potiphar's household then we find Moses having the steward of God's force delivering the people from Israel from Egypt and we also find the Lord of our life is our creator God in Jesus Christ and he himself is the greatest steward Lord Jesus he serves in the last Passover so that he tells the apostles they will understand later why he is doing that. The great servant leader who served, who came to serve others and not to be served. And we as his disciples also should look forward to serve our fellow human beings and not to be served. Finally, my brothers and sisters, James chapter 4 verse 14, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. So tomorrow can bring us disaster. But today if we are giving, if we are giving, then we will receive from someone even without our knowledge to help us. So when we are in trouble, then people will help us. So we need to help all those people who are in need, who are in trouble, so that when we are in that situation, Someone else would help us. Now, when we do anything, God tells us, we have to be stewards, we have to plan everything. Be a steward to plan everything before you engage in any kind of charity work. Because if you see Luke chapter 14, verse 28 to 30, if you want to build a tower, you can't just 
go and build a tower. We'll first establish a plan and see whether you have sufficient funds to complete the tower. Otherwise, if you just do the foundation and if you are short of money to build the tower, people will mock at you. And that's what Jesus tells. If you are going to be the stewards of your resources, plan it well. Live within your limits. Contribute within your limits. Do not go beyond your capacity because God has given us that capacity. God has given us that mind to understand, to think and to plan so that whatever we want to give, it's within our reach. So the big question to be stewards or to be owners, now we find that God wants everything. We are only his servants, but he has given us that love and carved us in the palm of his hand and has given us the free will to do whatever we want with our gifts. But then when we have the word of God, when we see the life of Jesus who came to this earth to die for us and restore that relationship with our creator God, we need to read on his word. The word is alive and active. So every time we read the word, meditate the word, practice the word and then proclaim the word, God is telling us, yes, be that better steward. We are not the owners. Our God is the owner. Even Jesus himself said, even he doesn't know the last hour or day when God will decide to end this world. Only he knows that. So he being God, as a human person, he's telling us, do not consider that you to be the owners. No, we are all only stewards. So my brothers and sisters, let us be good stewards, stewards of our time, of our talent and our treasure. We do not own anything. We are owned by God and God has given us all these blessings, all this wealth what we have, all those bank balances, all those properties, all those wealth and you know, the jewels and ornaments, the cars and whatnot, everything he has given us. But how well we use that to glorify God is our big question now. It's not the question whether it's stewardship or ownership, how well we are going to use the talents and time given to us. My brothers and sisters, let us be good stewards of our time, talent and treasure.